exactly is the purpose of the Higgs? And, and what other particles have they found since they discovered the Higgs? Well, the, the, the Higgs is, is uh, it's a very unique particle. It's the only one of its kind that has certain, certain properties of what are called spin and, 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 it, and its mass. And it, it, it is, it's, you know, in a simple way, uh, we understand that it's necessary for uh, particles having mass, for them actually having mass, that the theory itself um, uh, and quantum field theory uh, is, is, a, is a great theory for particles that uh, are without any mass, the way they interact. But in order to um, essentially explain certain mathematical aspects of it, you need something like a Higgs particle. You need a particle that has the properties of a Higgs mathematically to have the theory work out, to have the theory work out and have masses and things like that. Um, you know, there's a lot of analogies people make and, you know, uh, some of them are better than others, but, you know, the one that's most often used is, is the idea that, you know, the Higgs is this field. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a field that permeates everything and particles moving through the field get mass. I mean, and the, the simple analogy being, you know, uh, throwing, a part of, throwing a ball through the air versus throwing it, you know, trying to push it through water or molasses, you know, that, um, that the different, the, 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 the medium that things move through mm. determine its mass. So the Higgs, is, the Higgs is like the medium? The Higgs is a medium. So the Higgs is, you know, fundamentally the Higgs is something we, we call a field. And, you know, what we believe is that in the very, very early universe, for, you know, uh, right after, the, you know, the Big Bang, in some sense, this field turned on, you know, that suddenly this field turned on or it was created in these early, at this early stage. And uh, particles obtain you know attained mass and you know began to have the interactions that we know um so the higgs is a field what we know is that in a field you know when you combine these particles you can excite the field and it uh, it it manifests itself as a particle coming off um and so that's what the higgs boson is the higgs you know when they see the higgs particle it's a perturbation in the Higgs field, that when we, we combine these things at such incredibly high energies, and it creates a disturbance in the Higgs field that we see as the Higgs particle, as the Higgs boson. So are there, is there any way, or are there any theories that suggest that there could be like dimensions that we can't even perceive with our senses? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can't perceive that with our senses more than, you know, Right. Four. I mean, you know, the three physical, I mean, the three space dimensions and one time dimension. So, yes. So, yes. So that is the question. That you, I mean, all these ideas, I mean, m many of these ideas, well, certainly in string theory uh, uh, posits more dimensions. Um, you know, this is this, this question of multiverses is do, do multiverses correspond to more dimensions? And, you know, there's various theories about you know, why don't we see them? Uh, you know, is it possible that there are these dimensions, but somehow they're, they're all crunched up. So beyond our dimensions, they're crunched up and they're so tiny that we can't see them. They're folded on each, into each other. But um, yes, I mean, we, you know, we, we don't see these dimensions uh, clearly in, in, in our normal activity, but there are theories about how, if they exist, there might be, they might be manifested. Okay, and um, I mean, again, just to give you an example of what this could mean, for, you know, it w would mean, uh, essentially, it would be a bizarre phenomena uh, where something might just appear. So uh, one of the classical examples is if you think of, um, if you think of the fact that suppose you lived in a, you know, on a piece of paper, suppose we lived in two dimensions. Mm -hmm. So a piece of paper is just two dimensions. Um, and you know, you, you walk around, you're just on the paper. You can't see above or you can't see below. So all you can see is what's in the paper, in the plane of the paper. And now suppose there is another dimension. You're not aware of it, but there is another dimension and some ball 
you know, comes in and enters your universe. Um, well, what would you see? You would see, you know, when it first touches, you'd suddenly see it's a spot. And then if it's a sphere, you know, you'd see it expand. And as it goes through, it, it, you know, and passes through, the spot would get bigger and bigger, and then it would get smaller and smaller, and then it would disappear. Right. And so it would be this phenomena that you would not be able to explain with, our, with your normal theories of, you know, you've never seen anything like this. Suddenly something appeared mm -hmm. and disappeared. Um, and that would be evidence of something, you know, possible evidence of something from another dimension. So, um, you know, that's in, in a sort of a one simple way to imagine what, what does this mean? What, you know, what would it be if there's another dimension and how could we detect it? And so we look for strange phenomena like that, that we couldn't, that doesn't fit into our theory, but might fit into how it would work if it was, um, you know, if it was coming from another dimension. Right. It's not something that you could explain with just shapes. That's right. You couldn't, or, you know, just like, you know, forces that we know and things like that. So, right. so, you know, evidence, yeah, of, of other dimensions would be really weird phenomena, you know. Is there any weird phenomena that sticks out that, that people have, that we've found in the past decade or so that hints to anything like this? Not that I know of, no. Okay. I mean, they all know, no, 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 like sudden appearances of, of, a, of a UFO or things like that. Yeah. So, um, no, I mean, that's, but that's what they're looking for is they're looking for things that don't, you know, that don't follow the normal rules of physics, but might uh, uh, follow, you know, but might be explainable in terms of some of these other theories. And there are other theories that do explain these. And, and you know, using other ideas and, and multi dimensions and things, they can try to explain some of, uh, some of the, uh, m you know, missing uh, understanding in cosmology. Um, but, that, you know, there's not enough, there's nothing that's definitive for sure. Um, so, yeah, what particles have been found besides the boson, the Higgs boson well, since your documentary? Well, there's, there's, have been no new particles. I mean, uh, I mean, there's no, you know, there's, um, you know, no fundamental new particles. I mean, there's certain variations of things, um, certain things that have certain properties that, you know, we didn't expect, but um, in terms of anything beyond the standard model, um, which is the quarks that we know, the electrons, the muons, the neutrinos, um, they have not found a new particle that doesn't fit into this paradigm. So, you know, that begs the question, is it, um, is the theory wrong? Um, or is it just that we don't have enough energy? Because, you know, the, the, the problem is these theories, they don't really predict definitively what the masses of these particles are. Um, we had a certain idea of what the mass of the Higgs should be around what it should be. Um, but, um, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's always a question, are we at the high, are we at, a, because we know that you need higher energies to find these particles. I mean, that they, mm. they, they uh, that's one of the reasons we don't see them is that they, they, uh, they don't exist normally, they're not stable. I mean, even the Higgs boson, it doesn't, it doesn't last. We don't really even see the Higgs. The Higgs almost immediately decays into other things. Um, but our theory predicts what it should do, and that's what they find. Um, so uh, the, uh, you know, the general, the idea still is that for many people, they think that, that um, we should make, we need to have even more powerful accelerators. We need to get to higher energies. Um, but of course, the, you know, the question is, well, how high? And, you know, it's very expensive and technologically difficult, but there are uh, efforts now to build a, already to build a successor, to build a successor to the LHC. Really? Um, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's What would something plans. like that look like? Well, again, you could do, uh, it could either be a big ring, another ring, even bigger, or um, the other alternative is a, a, a linear collider where you basically, you have things that, you know, are, are originated at two ends and you just accelerate them right to each other and bang them together. And so there are proposals um, in Asia 
and there's a proposal at CERN, but these are, you know, 20, 30 year plans. So the LHC itself is still, you know, very active. They actually have just upgraded. They're in the middle of a, a big upgrade. So they already have the, they're, they're going to have the capability to go to higher energies and they keep improving their optics in a sense, you know, so they're, mm. they've also upgraded, they've upgraded both the ring to get higher energies and more accuracy and more, more what's called luminosity. So, you know, these are bunches of things that come together and, you know, the more you can focus them, the more collisions you're going to get. Mm. Um, it's not, and that's not just one proton, one proton. These are packets, you know, of, you know, million, billions of, of uh, protons and, you know, they sort of fly through each other and you get a certain number of collisions. And so of course, if you can focus it more, you'll get more collisions. So they can, they're improving that they're improving their detectors, you know, their ability to detect things. Um, and then they're also starting to lay the groundwork for what could be the next, um, the next generation of things. Mm.